All right, thank you guys for having me today. Uh, my name is Zach Henning. I am the Executive Director of the Advanced Institute for Development and Learning. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization that focuses on speech and feeding services for kids with special needs, uh, as well as family and support programs and education programs. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit today about who we are, um, what our values are, and uh, kind of what we do and what we're planning on doing. Um, I will let you know that all the photos that are in this presentation have been put on here with the express written consent uh, of the families involved. And so let me tell you a little bit about um, the, the values of who we are. And, uh, rather than me telling you directly, here's who we are, here's, here's what we are, um, I want to share a couple letters uh, that I think really embody what our therapists do, what we do on a daily basis, and why we do what we do. Um, so the first letter is uh, for, for our, one of our speech therapists from a parent. And she said, thank you for being such an important person in our lives. Thanks to you, my son has less anxiety, is learning to be a team player, has acquired many skills and coping strategies. You've been a beautiful light in our lives. Thank you for being so thoughtful, purposeful, and patient with them, as well as all your kiddos. We're so appreciative that you're sharing your truth yet with the world. Um, and then from one of our feeding uh, parents to our therapist, I can't even begin to express how thankful I am that God brought you to South Carolina and into our lives. I didn't think we'd ever see our son eat more than yogurt, applesauce, Cheerios, and bananas. And somehow, <laughs> eight months later, we have graduated from our first therapy Thank you for your love, care, and support that you give to the children and their parents. You're truly a blessing. I appreciate all your hard work and dedication to finding solutions when others don't. And we're going to miss you. Um, this is who we are, and this is what we're all about uh, on a daily basis. And so, what is our mission? What we do is support the physical, emotional, and psychological growth and development of children with special needs, as well as our families. How do we do this? We advance our development and learning, hence our name. Uh, with the provision of uh, therapeutic services that include speech therapy, feeding therapy, family support systems, and educational initiatives. And I'm going to go into depth in talking about each one of those. Um, our clinic is located on Verde Boulevard. Uh, it opened uh, January of last year, a uh, brand new building. Uh, if you know where the Embassy Suites Hotel is, we're across the street uh, where the entrance to Hollingsworth Park is. Um, and so the building is as old as we are. Uh, we did start January of last year, so we've been in existence for a little over a year and a half now. Um, we took a lot of care into our facility. Um, for example, we don't have any fluorescent lights. All of our lighting is LED um, to work with kids who have sensory issues. We also have dimmer switches on all of our lighting. Um, we have specialty rooms that are designated for uh, sensory processing, uh, cooling down, um, and as well as speech rooms. Uh, we have two gyms. Uh, one is designated for obstacle courses um, that we do for fun, but we also do uh, for therapeutic value, including sequencing and following directions. In our other gym, we have a rock wall, uh, we have um, a slide, uh, as long as a little playground. Uh, you can see the rock wall right there, and as well as several <coughs> swings. And we have uh, rigs set up all throughout the clinic, both out here and in the rooms. Um, where the swings are designated for children of different abilities and different ages. Um, we're able to take uh, children from birth to 21. Um, our youngest so far has been five days old. Our oldest has been 18 years. And so we do take uh, a good amount of, uh, of an age range. Uh, what are we trying to do? So we are trying to provide children and their families the most innovative and advanced therapeutic assessments treatment, education, and support available. And this is not just a tagline. This is what we believe in, and this is what we go day in and day out and work extremely hard to be able to look at the most recent research articles, look at the most recent equipment, test it out. Um, we have a connection and a network with clinics all over the country that we have daily conversations with of what are the best practices that are going on around the country, of what we can use and we share our information with them and they share their information with us so that we can really provide the best care for our kids and that's what we try to do as much as possible and in fact we have an entire division devoted to that in our organization that's how serious we are uh, we do have operate under four divisions our speech and feeding therapy division our family support and education our academy division and our research and development so we'll talk about each of those uh, what people mostly know us about um, is our, feet, our feeding and speech. 
And I have a laundry list up here uh, <coughs> in, in terms of feeding and speech. We encompass a lot of services. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a few of what we do, but it's not limited to this list. Uh, in, terms of our, in terms of our feeding therapy, uh, we work on decreasing feeding tube dependency, uh, oral motor skill development, uh, managing mis difficult mealtime behaviors. If meals are lasting a really long time or there's a lot of trouble that are happening, we address that. Uh, addressing weight concerns, growth concerns, uh, swallowing issues. Um, our therapists are vital stem certified, if that is necessary for equipment. Um, and we also have specialists that have had extensive education and training um, to be able to assess uh, if there is a tongue or lip tie, what classification that is, and how, if at all, if it is a structural impediment to feeding. Now, in terms of our speech therapy, uh, we work with our articulation, phonological, and fluency disorders. Uh, again, we work with oral motor skill development, expressive and receptive language delays, auditory processing, uh, alternative and augmentative communication, and again, our specialists do work with speech as well on tongue and lip tie, whether that is something that is uh, an impediment or not. Um, in terms of our parent support and education programs, uh, we have uh, monthly parent date nights. On the last Friday of every month, uh, we select four families who have applied, and we give them the night off. And so we take care of their kids, and so from 5.30 to 8, and the parents or a parent or guardian can go out and do their Christmas shopping, do their errands, go to dinner, reconnect with their partner, or uh, what most of them need, uh, take a nap. <laughs> And so we, we allow to do that. Um, every quarter we offer family fun nights, uh, which is a group where we get together with uh, families. They come out and we have a themed event uh, just for an opportunity to socialize in a sensory friendly environment. Uh, the first one that we did was in December. Um, you can see Santa over there. Uh, he is a member of our board and he plays a wonderful Santa Claus. <laughs> and uh, we had a uh, holiday party where we had games set up all around. Uh, and then we had uh, a station where the kids uh, created gingerbread houses. Uh, they built them, they decorated them, and then they ate them. And it was so much fun. Uh, and then they got in line and they got to sit down with Santa and have a photo uh, without having to go and mess with them all. Because uh, that's, that's a mess in itself and when you have a kid with a, with a special need, that's tough. Um, so we provided that opportunity. We're actually having our next social tonight. Uh, it is going to be a frozen yogurt social, and so we've got a frozen yogurt truck where they're going to uh, decorate their frozen yogurt and eat it, and then we've got games, we've got balloons, um, we also have somebody who specially works with uh, kids with special needs to do face painting. Um, so we're looking forward to that event. Um, our Christmas event, we had well over 75 families um, come and do it, and we're expecting another 50 families or so tonight. I'm very excited. Zachary, your program is open to like your social. I will get to that. Yes, okay. but the answer is yes. Uh, and, and the other reason I interrupt you is, is we send out a recreation newsletter through Grand Canyon every month. I'd love it if you would send me well, the information, and I'll include it in that. If Absolutely. It's open, that'd be great. Um, our third uh, parent support education program is communicating resources and organizations in and around Greenville uh, that are special needs family friendly. This is why I'm a part of Greenville Canon. This is, this is why I come to these uh, sessions every month. When I moved here from Indiana, I knew very little, if anything at all, as to what services were available. I knew a couple organizations, and that was about it. And then I came here, and I was like, oh, there's that. Oh, there is estate planning. Oh, there's auctioneering. Oh, there's different types of special needs, uh, behavioral therapy, uh, early interventionists. And so I was able to learn a lot more. And what I do is I take all of the presentations and, and materials that I get from these events, and we have conversations uh, with our families uh, when they need those services. Um, I'm having a conversation on Monday with a parent about child fund um, that I didn't know about uh, until now. And so that's why I do Greenville Canada. I very much enjoy uh, learning from this and being able to take it to our families. Uh, and then we do clothing and accessory giveaway, giveaways. We have a ton of donations that come in for clothes, toys, and baby accessories. Um, it is an unbelievable amount that we get. Um, and so we serve our families and we serve other families uh, in the community to be able to do that. And I'll talk about some of that success in a minute. Um, our K-4 through 3rd grade academy is our most ambitious project yet uh, that we're working on. In 2017, uh, it will be ready to pilot a small transition school. 
for children with special needs. Um, the purpose of our academy is to assist children who might otherwise be in a self-contained classroom. No, we are not a replacement, nor are we a competition for any existing schools that are um, designed for special needs. Um, what we found in our research is that there are certain kids that have special needs that either do not qualify for certain schools because of financial reasons, they do not qualify because they do not re meet certain inclusion criteria, or they qualify and they're on a wait list. Um, and so we wanted to create a program and we wanted to create something that would move education beyond uh, staring at an iPad all day and moving into an active learning model uh, of education. And our goal is to transition these kids to a, tra just to a traditional classroom by fourth grade. A very lofty goal, a very ambitious goal, uh, but one that we believe that we can attain over the years. Um, we are using uh, a best practice model that is used across the country. It's called the Feuerstein Instructional Enrichment Model, which is an active learning education model. And so we're hoping to adapt that to our program by creating a multidisciplinary approach, including specialty teaching, occupational therapy, speech, and psychology in a specifically tailored program. Um, we've already got the space for it, uh, and we have started to set up the materials for it. And so what we're waiting on is some funding uh, to cover the equipment. And so that's what we're waiting on right now, but we are looking to launch this in 2017. Very excited about this, very look, much looking forward to getting this um, started in the community. And then our research and development division, which I talked to you a little bit about earlier. Um, we are looking at the, the peer-reviewed articles, we're looking at our, our network connection across the country, um, finding the best ways and finding better ways. Um, because we understand that sometimes we're not the most efficient at everything. Um, so we're finding who is, and we're learning from them to be able to do that uh, in our community. Um, in the next five years, we're testing and using various models and development of our programs. Um, the first model that we've been testing has been uh, happening for the last year and a half, which is our team-based model and protocol for our feeding therapy. And I can tell you, it has had <coughs> tremendous results. Um, it has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and so we have been talking to folks across the country and they are loving what it is and we actually have a course um, that we are um, laying out for professionals who want to learn about more about how we approach feeding and how we do feeding therapy. Um, and so that course is actually uh, getting started in uh, December. Um, we've got a group in Portland that is uh, going to be uh, wanting to get it first. Uh, so, but we will be across the country uh, sharing that, um, that CEU course. We have, uh, we're looking for the advancement of the FI model, which is the Feuerstein method, uh, to see how it works with our population and see if we can do this and, and if we can make this successful. And then outcome management and support of intensive therapy. Um, so far we have had one intensive patient come to our clinic. Um, this was a family from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, she had been working with her granddaughter with feeding therapies in and out for four years with absolutely zero success and she was kind of at her end and she's like, I don't know where to go, I don't know what else to do, I heard about you guys, we're going to try it. Uh, she came down for two weeks and we did a two week intensive therapy sessions with her, um, with her granddaughter and at the end of that uh, she was eating a well balanced diet including fruits, vegetables and meats and we sent her home, and she has not had to go to therapy since. And in fact, she sends us regular emails and photos of what her granddaughter has tried on her own, and we're so excited about that, um, that she's doing so well. Um, the way our clinic is set up right now, it just logistically cannot support um, an intensive model, um, but we are looking to grow into that. Um, we've got the skill set, uh, we've got the folks um, that work for us are really good folks. Um, so we're, 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 we have the skill, we just want to make sure that we have the infrastructure to be able to handle that and work on that. So that's something that we're going to be working on in the next couple of years. Um, what have we done in the last year and a half? Um, as of right now, we see more than 100 patients each week uh, for speech and feeding. Uh, we're becoming a regional provider for therapy services. Uh, not only do we see folks in Greenville County, Spartanburg County, Anderson County, and Pickens, the, and the upstate area, uh, we have uh, one person that comes down from Winston-Salem, and we have regular clients that drive down from Asheville, Charlotte, and drive up from Columbia and Charleston. We've got folks that drive a distance to come see us on a weekly basis. 
And so we, uh, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves because they're driving along, they want results, and we're gonna, we do our best to work with them. Um, but we're pretty proud of our accomplishment um, in this short period of time to be able to do that. Uh, in terms of our date nights, we've hosted 25 families so far, uh, and we're ready for more. Um, we're, we, we love to have them, and we love to, to host them, and I'll tell you in a minute about how you can be a part of that. Uh, we've collaborated with other community organizations to provide 320 families with clothing, baby accessories, and toys. Um, and we've gotten to the point that we have enough donations to support all of our groups. And we've, uh, we uh, have three other groups that we talk with, and they're all full of donations. And so I have more stuff, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second, too. And the most exciting thing, number four, we are expanding. Um, I just got to announce this on Facebook this morning. Yes, we do have a Facebook page. Uh, please come and see it, and because that's where all of our events are and what's going on. Uh, we will be starting a second clinic in Malden. Uh, starting, uh, hopefully it's going to be either September 1st or October 1st. We're working out the final details. Um, but I'm currently working on hiring another speech uh, pathologist to be able to handle our next clinic. Uh, we are completely full at Verde, and it's wonderful, and, but we want to get people off our wait list, and we also want people in Simpsonville and Malden to have a shorter distance time and give them that option. Uh, so we're very excited about getting that started, uh, and it's happening really, really soon. Um, so that's what we're working on in the immediate future. Uh, what can you do? Um, how can you help? Number one, just being an advocate of us, uh, spreading the word. Yes, we're here. Uh, we've been here for a year and a half, and we are not going anywhere. We've had some great successes, and we're, the word is getting around to parents. The word's getting around on social media. Uh, we're doing some good things. I'm not at all ashamed to say that. Uh, we're very excited about what we have. Uh, we do, in terms of feeding therapy and speech therapy, we accept referrals through pediatricians and through specialists that include early interventionists. Uh, we do accept BabyNet, uh, we do accept Medicaid, uh, we are out of network with primary insurance, so let me tell you how that, how that works for a second. So if you are a Blue Cross Blue Shield, Blue Choice, Aetna, United Healthcare, Cigna, uh, what we do is we charge an upfront cash rate for our feeding and speech therapy service. And then at the end of the month, what we do is we provide all the documentation, including the forms that, that the parent needs to be able to build their own insurance. So we train them on how to do that. We provide the documentation. All they have to do is sign it and mail it. And then they get reimbursed based on their individual plan. And so that's how we work. We're a very small organization right now. Um, so in order to, to we don't have the, the enough support to have the billing. Um, there's uh, five of us. So we're, uh, that's how we have to, to manage uh, for that area. Uh, direct your families to sign up for programs. Each and every one of you has thought of a family that needs a night off. Um, you are more than welcome to sign up. You do not have to be a patient. You don't have to be a current patient or foreign patient. Our only condition is that you are a family who has a child with a special need. That's all. And so other than that, uh, we do have an application process. Our applications are available at our clinic, um, at Advanced Therapy Solutions Clinic up at Haywood, uh, down in Simpsonville with Renovation Church. Or if you can't make it to any of those areas or your families can't, you have my card, contact information. I can email it to you, and you can just get that in. And so anybody who's looking for a night off or anybody who's looking to be a part of these social events, uh, these quarterly family fun events, um, they're a hoot, and they're, they're, they're fun to be at. Uh, so we definitely do that. It is open to anybody that meets that criteria. Uh, please take our clothing and our toys <laughs> and our accessories. Um, every time I get rid of one, we have a family that comes in and cleans out three rooms of their house, it seems, and gives 15 bags. Um, I don't have the support in terms of our clinic, in terms of space, to be able to hold our, our donations. So I am looking for other organizations that have needs that have parents and families that have that needs toys that needs accessories and that needs clothing if you need something or if one of your families need it let me know um, you can ask for something specifically or ask for something generally um, and chances are i probably have it and you're welcome to have it um, i really love working with partners uh, we work with several partners some of which are in this room uh, and i'd love to continue to expand that and, and make sure that everybody in this area is getting what they need um, and then volunteering at our events. Um, you're always welcome to be a part of this and, and be a part of our events. And I'm, 
Uh, I'm always looking for new volunteers that, that love what we're doing and can help uh, with the parents and help with our date nights and help with uh, different aspects of what we're doing. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, please see me. Uh, in terms of our information, uh, all of this information is on the business card that I have in front of you. Uh, and so anytime you have any questions, anything you want to do, anything you want to partner with, any projects that you're working on, um, let us know how we can help you. And so we're here and we're, uh, we're excited to be here and we're excited to continue what we're doing. Uh, so I'd like to open it up to questions. How many students are you looking at for your academy? Uh, we're going to start with six. Okay. Um, so as we do a K-4 through third grade academy, we're going to do this as a five-year plan. Um, so we're going to start K-4 first uh, in 2017, so we're going to accept six students, <coughs> and then each year we're going to expand upon the grade. And so our school, will, at its max, will have 30. I'll just make it. <coughs> I'll just make a comment. Zach is real. What he does is real. If you have an opportunity to go see the place, you will be amazed. It is neat. Thanks, Jim. In order for students to be referred, do they have to first have had a swallow study or those kinds of things? No, you do not. Um, we just ask that uh, we have a referral from a pediatrician so that that parent has seen a pediatrician first or has worked with an early interventionist um, or a specialist, um, somebody that is in the know of, of what's going on uh, so that we're not just seeing them for the first time without anybody else looking at them. Might that include speech language pathologists from the school district? Absolutely. I'm not a psychologist. Occasionally I'm a psychologist and occasionally I will have children would be counted. That would be considered a specialist, absolutely. I know sometimes it requires a, a real MD to sign off on things. Uh, generally what we would do is have a conversation. Okay. And, and then we have, we have protocols in place to kind of work with that. Good. Any other questions for Zach? Let's give Zach a big hand. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got one question. One question. I'm really interested in what your background is. My background? Mm -hmm. um, I have a uh, bachelor's degree from Virginia Tech, a uh, master's from Radford University, and a doctorate from the University of Kentucky. Um, my background is in communication, uh, specifically organizational communication. Uh, I've worked uh, for the first 10 years of my life, I was a professor, uh, teaching folks how to set up businesses and how to work with nonprofits and uh, how to uh, do presentations like this. Uh, and so uh, from there, um, I work with my wife, who is a speech language pathologist. Uh, and a specialist, and she uh, had a dream to come here and bring uh, a feeding program here uh, that we were working on while we were in Indiana, and uh, so that was her dream. So I followed her on that dream, and so I work on more of the business side of things. Um, I have spent, uh, in addition to teaching, I've spent the last ten years working with organizations on how to improve their communication processes. Uh, so I do a lot of consulting, and so and then now I do this. And she's absolutely amazing. By the way, I've sat in on one of her sessions with one of the kids that I recommended about two Thank years you. ago. <laughs> and I mean, this was a child that absolutely would eat like two foods and would that throw these amazing bits. Yeah, I knew it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a testimonial up there. So, it, you know, it's really been fantastic what, what she can do. And, and parents will say there's no way she'll get. And then they're just amazed. They're just blown away. So she's really, really does a fantastic job. We're, we're proud of our folks. They, they work true miracles. And I'm impressed every day with what they're able to do. So now we can give Zach a big hand. Give him a big hand.